Okay, this is now tar the tarot lesson number three. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a kind of follow-up to number two. And in number two, we were looking at the seven of swords here. And we were just focusing on the two swords at the background and the five swords in the fellow's hand. We're forgetting about the background, the people, the colors, the rest of it. So I suggested that I, I have a suggestion on how you might want to develop ongoing understanding of any card or of all cards. So you get a sheet of paper, right? So here's a piece of paper. And I wrote down the Seven of Swords in the middle. And so in the last one, I talked about the difference between, or I noticed, these two swords here, which are stable, and the fellow taking off with the other five and rather than say this is stable and this is unstable I wrote down on a piece of paper stable and then I wrote iffy because I don't know if you know the word or the expression but if something is a little bit iffy it's like it's not quite right or it's maybe you know there's something wrong with it or something off it's iffy and so the first thought I had was Two swords are stable, but the five are kind of iffy. And that's what I write down on, let's say, today. And then I go back to it tomorrow, for instance, and I look at and I think, do I have anything more to add? Or I'm not trying to force it, and we shouldn't try to force understanding. And you know when you're reaching and it's, and you're trying to and you're just making stuff up so we don't need to do that so I go back to I've got stability and I've got iffy and then I think what did I write here rushing okay because it looks like the difference between the two swords stuck in the ground and the person taking away uh, taking off with them and it looks like he's rushing or maybe there's haste involved so when this card comes up in a reading, maybe the person is th ought to think about what's stable and what's rushing. And maybe the, the idea of the card is identify what's stable and, and, and already works or is already in place and then identify what is not quite in place and maybe you need to work on what's not in place. So I, I've added something here and then let, let's, let's say I've done enough for the day and I go back a couple of days later and I look at the picture again and um, oh yeah so I've got the two swords here which in a way are ready for use and that's what I wrote down ready for use because you can go along and you can the, the the handle is easy to access you just hold it and pick it up so these two are part of the situation or part of the answer is ready for use and you can make immediate progress or make immediate developments but most of the picture, because the, the, of the way the person's holding the five swords, I wrote down awkward. And it's a bit like these two can be easily manipulated because of the way they are. But this, the person, there's an awkwardness about it. And so I can come back tomorrow or the next day and look at and maybe revise the word awkward and think of I I notice something else in the meantime or I come up with a different idea that in the same way that with this one I went from iffy to rushing I could go from awkward to I don't quite know at this moment what other word instead of awkward maybe because um, if you notice he's looking back so maybe he's and maybe he's feeling guilty or um, maybe he is or the person in the, qu in the questioner, the person that the card refers to is not that not 100% confident. You know, they're, they're, 
moving ahead, yes, but maybe they've got one eye on the past or they're making sure that um, things are going to be okay, that they haven't left something behind, maybe. So what you're doing is you're developing an understanding of the card. You're not thinking about meanings particularly, but you're developing an understanding of what's going on in the picture. Then when you know what's going on in the picture, when you've got a questioner and an actual question and the card comes up, you're going to automatically talk sensibly about the card without having to remember. Um, you, you just notice and you know what to say because in the meantime, you've been developing an understanding of the card and what's what's going on with it. And the other thing is, I put one other point at the bottom here. Oh yeah, this card in this particular Seven of Swords, it's, I wrote down contradiction, contradictions, because in a way we've got stability here and we've got instability over here. So there's a contradiction going on with this particular card. And I thought, whereas, I wrote down the Sea of Cups, but there's the Four of Batons. That's just one. It's welcoming, it's friendly, it's happy, it's successful, it's enjoyable, it's a sunny day. And it's like there's one type of activity going on in this particular card. Whereas here in the Seven of Swords, we've got... I don't want to say contradictions, but we've got more than one and maybe incompatible activity or idea going on. And so maybe what you do then is we've got here, we've got the four of batons is sort of one type of, of experience. And so is the three of cups where you've got the women dancing and celebrating. And so... Maybe you, you look at the other cards to see what other cards show two different things going on at the same time. And maybe they're not quite in harmony with each other. Or maybe this, the, the Seven of Swords, indicates there's a need to develop harmony or compatibility between two different things or two different people or two different experiences. So, the other thing is, I wanted to show you this incredible diagram, right? I think I referred to this a bit yesterday. But here we've got the x-axis is time, and the y-axis is understanding. And as you go up the x-axis, the y-axis, you've got more understanding. So, at the, at, at the end of the day, um, you think about what you've been through in the day. Maybe you think about, maybe you're, you're just thinking about the tarot itself and what you learned. Or maybe you think about what you went through during the day. And at the end of the day, you, you know for sure you learned something. Maybe it was a terrible day, but you learned you don't like that person or you don't like that experience or you've had enough of working overtime or you've had enough of driving in traffic, whatever it happens to be. But now you know so you've learned something from the day. And so what you do is you get and in your notebook or your journal or whatever you keep or your piece of paper, you draw a y, an x-axis and a y-axis and you put a little dot there. And that represents your learning today, your understanding today. And it's a bit better than it was yesterday. It doesn't have to be a huge amount, a little bit. All it means is you, you, you have more understanding today. And then tomorrow, I have a pen somewhere here. There's a pen. Okay, tomorrow you're going to do the same thing. And so maybe you, you think through what happened during the day. And if you, if you realize that yesterday's understanding wasn't quite what you thought it was, that doesn't, doesn't mean you've got to go back and fix it or change it. Because today, because you realize that yesterday's understanding wasn't as good as you thought it was, you've understood a bit more. So you can put another little dot for today up there and you're gradually over time. If, if you each day you learn a little bit or learn something or understand a tiny bit more, it means that when you come back to put your dot, you're gradually, you're going to be going upward 
as time goes by, you develop more understanding. Um, okay, that's what I wanted to say for lesson three. So I'll be back, what's today? Monday, Tuesday, when Thursday, l l I'll try and put another one up on Thursday and that'll be lesson four. And we'll probably go back to a card itself and see what we get rather than this. Okay, thank you very much for watching and um, have a good day. Okay, bye-bye.